Good morning and welcome back to One Step at a Time Farmstay. I'm Lucas and I'm so happy to share our journey with you. I never used to like gardening. Actually, I despised it quite a bit. But I've grown to love it uh, for the pure fact that it's time that I have that I just sit and meditate on our Father's Word and things in life and work it through and it's time that I can actually keep myself busy and clear my head at the same time. It's been a while since we posted the video uh, because the last week or two has just been hectic and we faced a few challenges. Things just went terribly wrong in certain aspects. Um, our lawnmower, for instance, burned out. And I've been spending this last week trying to, to fix it or rebuild it uh, with what I have. Because at this moment, you know, with our financial... Uh, situation as it is uh, we don't have the money to just go out and buy a new one um, so I'm trying to make a plan with what I have to try and get the lawnmower going I'm not the greatest of engineers <laughs> so yeah, I haven't been successful yet but I'm still working on it um, I've just decided to actually take a bit of a breather, take a, st a step away from it, and focus on something else in order not to frustrate myself beyond the point of sanity. <laughs> That's one of the major big challenges that I'm facing. You are also aware about the bad germination that we had and it's kind of I'm still trying to figure out what's going on because yeah it's really thank you it's really a been a sad start to the garden as I see it uh, because of the bad germination yeah and I'm really still trying to figure out what's going on I I do accept Part of the failure is on my side, especially with the first uh, planting or sowing in the seed trays. I might have done that a bit early, so it might have been a bit cold still. And actually, we had, of all the tomatoes that I started in the seed trays, one that germinated and I transplanted it here, but all the rest didn't germinate and I don't really understand why. I came and directly sowed where all these little purple markers are. Uh, I direct, direct sowed some tomatoes as well. Again it seems that there's no germination and as you can see it's very lightly mulched. So for the second sowing, direct sowing, there also doesn't seem to be any germination. This is now, say, basically a month later. I don't understand. So yesterday I sowed again in little seed trays. Yeah, I'll give that about two weeks and see if there's any, any germination. But it leaves me to wonder, you know, what the reason might be. It's not that it's too early now, it's basically it's hot. It's almost summer temperatures. I've got a suspicion that it might be to do with our municipal water. Because we haven't had rain yet. Our rain season is looks like it's going to start late or we might have a very dry summer. But <coughs> At the end of the day, I still don't understand why 
the germination is being so so poorly so yeah that leaves me to think that maybe our municipal water is playing a role to some extent because about two three months ago there was this uh, cholera and E. coli breakout you know our water systems more to the side of Pretoria Amman Scroll and there was a few fatalities ever since then we noticed that obviously they are treating the water a bit more vigorously uh, I think to be open up the municipal water tap that um, sometimes the water runs out white, almost foamy white, and this heavy smell of chlorine in chlorine in the water, and who knows what other chemicals as well. And I'm thinking or wondering if that isn't destroying our microbiology within the soil if i can just show you quickly we've transplanted some lettuce and onions and i uh, told you about how great the potatoes we're doing and just to show you in the last week we have a look at this little lettuce here it was perfect two three days ago i did water the garden with the hose with the municipal water because we haven't had rain yet and yeah it just seems for no reason whatsoever my lettuce or the lettuce are dying off there's a second plant and that one was perfect yesterday last night still some of the watermelons and sweet melons that we transplanted last week and it was doing so 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 well oh sorry there it is and now all of a sudden it seems like it's struggling and it's only after I watered the potatoes were doing excellently and also for no reason whatsoever It just, you know, some potatoes just started dying off. But what I don't understand is the rest are doing well. I don't really understand what's, what's causing it, what's going on. I'm speculating on the water. Our beans are doing well. Um, yeah, there's a few that I lost to cutworms or mice or something like this little oaky over here you can see the top has been chopped off um but it's doing well the harbor squash it seems like they they are taking quite well uh, i decided to plant my zucchinis in containers because of the space issue that I've got and they seem to go I did water them the day before yesterday and uh, you can see that spot on this one as well so I don't know I don't know if it's the water um, because of our space problem that we've got with the gardens I decided to create a little 
patch here where we are going to have an in-ground garden. There's a tarp underneath and then I just put some uh, roof sheets over it and packed it down with rocks so that but no light can come through and the grass can die off and hopefully in a month or two. I know it's a bit late, but we might have a in-ground garden. We also created a bit of an in-ground garden here next to our kitchen. Um, a little bit of a kitchen garden. Well, all of this is a kitchen garden. Uh, so in that little garden, well, between the kitchen and the office, we planted things that like cooler weather, um, like uh, uh, more lettuce and uh, kales, cabbages, stuff like that. Um, the spinach is charred leafy greens um, because that area is a bit cooler than the garden over here because it receives a, you know quite a bit more shade during the day than uh, what these open gardens uh, uh, do um, So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to grow cooler weather crops in there during the summer because it's a lot cooler there between the house and the office. Um, yeah, a lot more shade and a lot cooler. So hopefully we can grow juicy, sweet, lettuce there all summer long and it won't get better because of the heat um, an experiment that we're trying to see if we can't prolong our crops uh, there anyway let me get weeding <laughs>
just quickly want to show you something interesting. Um, one of our beans where the top has been chomped off um, found a way to grow in anyway. So, yeah, oh, that's exciting. Um, if we... Oh, where is it now? Yeah, look at that little fellow there. I want to grow. Yeah, he is determined to grow. <laughs> Although the stem has been chomped off like that one. Whoops, where is it now? Like that one over there. It's been cut down, but. Uh, decided to growing anyway so that's a little determined guy in the a real little determined guy in the garden so that is exciting that is quite encouraging to see a little beanstalk that although it's been cut down wants to grow and I think it's just proof that nature does want to work with you. The seed wants to grow. So with all the setbacks we encountered, there is positive as well. And that is encouraged for us as well. And the thing is, if you look at your so-called failures or setbacks, although it feels like you've been pushed against the rope, um, You've not been defeated yet. We are not defeated. Like I said, we've started new tomato seedlings uh, in the seed trace again yesterday. And although I've only got one tomato plant now, it's at least one. We are not defeated and we are not giving up. We'll just try and try until we succeed. Coming back to our conversation on gardening and now, it's not something that I particularly enjoyed in the past. And to be honest, someday still it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a, a chore. But it did also become a sacred time for me where I can spend time with Abba Father and really meditate on his word, on the scripture, masticating on the bread of life, and really understanding and learning and finding guidance from the word. And it reminds me of uh, Matthew 3. It's a beautiful scripture to me. It's basically where Jesus uh, shared the parable of the sower and why it's so so amazing to me is yes jesus taught his disciples and the audience following him in parables but this particular parable is where jesus basically explains the parable himself not leaving it to human inter interpretation or human error but sharing his teaching in a parable and explaining the, the parable as well. And it illustrates how Jesus thought and how his parable should be interpreted. But other than that, it's just the fact that we as gardeners or homesteaders, farmers, however you choose to classify yourself in a practical way we come out and we prepare our garden for the grain season we weed it and we prepare the little piece of land this plot to receive seed 
so that that seed can germinate and grow and yield the maximum fruit that we can have harvest at the end of the day. That is why we put all that preparation in. That preparation is specifically to grow healthy plants and to gain the maximum harvest from that plant. And on that note is the question, how do you prepare your heart to receive God's word? Let me quickly read you this piece of scripture from Matthew 13. They are just draw a practical parallel with it and your life as well. Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such lot large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down and the whole crowd stood along the shore and he spoke to them at length in parables saying a sower went out to sow and as he sowed some fell on the path and the birds came and ate it up some fell on rocky ground where it, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and withered for the lack of roots. Some seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what has been sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed that is sown on rich soil 
is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields 160 or 30 fold. So the point I'm trying to make is if we take the approach in our daily walk with God, in our spiritual life, to prepare our hearts as we prepare our gardens to receive seed. If we prepare our hearts in the same way to receive the seed of the Word of God and His rulership, His kingdom, His domain, His authority, what abundance of harvest would we actually have in our lives? The scripture says there will be a voice behind you saying this is the way walk ye in it. If we want to be guided by the Spirit to hear the voice saying this is the way walk ye in it, we also sometimes need to be prepared to hear the voice saying this isn't the way, don't walk in it. But we are so inclined to not hearing no from God. And I blame the prosperity gospel, uh, so-called prosperity gospel, for it. Because it teaches a thing from a perspective that I want, I want, I want, and I will bend God's will to bless me. I will, I will pull God's hand basically to place me in my endeavors. And that is not how God works. Uh, God says to acknowledge Him in your plans. But how you interpret that is <laughs> is not the way the prosperity gospel teaches. It is to find God's will, to hear what God says, to know God in your plans, and then to follow God's way, God's instruction. Not to try and force the hand of God to do your bidding. It is you that need to submit to the will of God. And sometimes, even though we've got these ambitions and desires of our hearts, and yes, God wants to bless you, and God gives you the desires of your heart, but you submit to God's authority, to God's reign, to God's kingdom, and prepare your heart to sometimes receive a no, to sometimes have a failed crop. Or to have a seed that doesn't germinate and grow. Of course, it's not God's will. Scripture always also says that the heart of a man is deceitful above all. Instead of knowing God's good and acceptable and perfect plan, we sometimes have an idea or an ambition that we want to accomplish. And we go to God and say, bless it. Please bless my plan. But we don't take into consideration what God's plan is for our lives. And then when setbacks come, we want to feel despondent and disappointed. And we want to maybe even blame God course I had faith for this but it failed but it was never God's plan it was never the purpose remember God created you in his image and likeness to accomplish his will on earth and if we stay true 
yes, God will bless you. God will provide. God, all that beautiful stuff is true, but that isn't the crux of the gospel. That isn't the, the crux of your relationship with God. Your relationship with God is about working His will, accomplishing His will, and being an instrument, an instrument in His hand. God is not a genie in a bottle or a lamb that you can rub and get three wishes. That's that's not God. That's idolatry. That's that's witchcraft. And the Bible isn't something that you take up and hold up to God and say, you said you will bless me. This is your word. Now you have to bless me. That's people that is not, that's not what it's for. That's not God. That's not the word of God. The word of God, the written word of God, is there to guide you, is there to show you God's will and God's purpose and His instruction, and you follow His instruction. Hi, and welcome back. The camera overheated outside and shut off, but it's a good thing because I digressed a bit. But I really want to finish up this video and get back on the topic quickly of preparing the soil of your heart to receive the seed of God's word. Yeah, so just to bring everything in context, is not every good idea is a God-inspired idea, idea. And not every good idea is in line with God's will in the first place, His purpose in the second place, and is commandment and instructions. And it's so easy to fall into that belief or trap that all good ideas are inspired by God and Him creating the opportunity for you to be blessed. And if I can make an absolute absurd uh, analogy is to say, okay, I stay in an area uh, mostly populated by males. So a good idea is to open a, broth a brothel because it will be very profitable. And now I assume that it's inspired by God. But if I actually acknowledged God and knew his word and knew his will, um, I would know that God is completely against sexual immorality and adultery and fornication. So it is my responsibility to submit myself to God's will and to His law and to His instruction. Um, and I could easily recognize that it is not God's will, but perversion. Let's quickly go back to the scripture and we can see in full context what it means to acknowledge God in all your ways and He will direct your paths. Proverbs 3 My son, do not forget my teaching. Do not forget my teaching. But let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart. So you will find favor and good repute in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. 
It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of your produce. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even as a father corrects the son in whom he delights. How blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For a prophet is better than the prophet of silver and a gain better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. I'm only going to read up to there. But reading the full context is actually everything that I explained is already there. And clearly from, from that scripture as well, yes, God wants to bless you. And there is blessing in submitting to God and being obedient to God and His instructions. But it is about seeking God and knowing Him. Jesus in Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things, uh, things shall be added. So yes, God will bless you, but it's not the blessing and the riches that we seek first. It is God and His righteousness that we seek first. We seek first the kingdom of God, His rulership, His authority, and His righteousness, His commandments, His law, and all these things shall be added unto you. So preparing the soil of your heart to receive God's word, the seed of God's word so that it can have a bountiful produce and harvest is about meditating on God's word, finding his guidance and his instruction. Psalm 1, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. So I really want to encourage you today to prepare your heart to receive the seed of God with as much care and as much diligence that you do when you prepare your garden to receive your seed to produce the harvest for your family. The crux of it is in knowing God, knowing His heart, knowing His will, knowing His purpose, and applying that to your life. I hope you take this word and that it encourages you and that you will meditate on it as well but most of all that you will take the scripture and really spend time in it and chew it over really meditate it 
and find understanding and direction in it. So that you can truly get to know the Father's heart and His will and purpose in your everyday life as well. I love you and I bless you and thank you for spending time with me today. Goodbye.